Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day, and it gives me great joy, great pleasure, it gives me peace, it makes me smile to be able to say to you, Merry Christmas, <laughs> and to say I hope that you are enjoying and taking full advantage of this Christmas season. Yes, this Christmas season, as we take out time to honor, acknowledge, and recognize uh, the most powerful thing that took place, one of the most powerful things that has ever taken place in human history, when God himself was placed in the womb of a virgin named Mary and was born born, born here on this earth and lived a sinless life and died a vicarious death for you and for me. And he didn't stay dead, but God the Father raised him from the dead on the third day and he ascended back to heaven uh, some 40 days later. And uh, then on the 50th day, he sent the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And look at the things that God has been doing ever since. So my friends, you if you're born again and you love Jesus Christ and you're washed in the blood, you are, you are taking full advantage of this opportunity to tell people that you meet downtown, uptown, around town, at the malls, wherever, at work, at home, at play, in the neighborhood, wherever you are, tell people, tell them Merry Christmas, tell them Merry Christmas. Praise the Lord. My wife and I just uh, celebrated our 41st wedding. Uh, anniversary and we went out of town and we, where we were you know people would say things to us sometimes they'd say seasons greetings or happy holidays or enjoy your holidays we'd always we look back at them and say Merry Christmas and you know what they were so relieved that, that someone would actually say Merry Christmas that they they were so glad to respond in kind and I said to one man I'm a Merry Christmas kind of guy Praise the Lord, and I'm excited about it. Why is that such a big deal? You know, I've been talking about it, and, and tonight you got to join me because I'm going to show you some things in the Scripture that will, if you did not see and understand the significance of Christmas and what it's all about, you certainly will as a result of being a part of the service tonight and hearing the, uh, the, the studying of the Scriptures tonight. Oh, I tell you, I, God has given me something that I want to share with you because because my friends, I want you to know that as that, listen, let me rephrase this. There's spiritual warfare going on. The spirit of modernity, which is basically the spirit of the Antichrist, is basically the spirit of the falling away, is trying to secularize everything. We're, the, 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 the corporations and powerful people, people with money, power, and influence are doing all that they can to just push Jesus out of the public square, to, to get rid of religion, to make America and the world a secular world, which in doing that, you just open the door for the devil to run roughshod with absolutely no resistance whatsoever. And the Bible prophesied, the Bible said in the last days that men would be among other things, you know, lovers of pleasure, lovers uh, of, uh, of uh, themselves, uh, bolsters, uh, lovers of money and all that. The Bible also in that litany says that men would be unholy, which means that men would become secular. Secular, uh, the Old Testament word is profane. Secular, that is without God. Secular, non-religious. And uh, a happy holidays is a non religious slogan. I'm moved, I, I, and I didn't even know this. I didn't know this when I first started talking about it. But I'm moved by the number of churches uh, that are posting online and other places, all of these uh, services and gatherings that they're having, and they're calling them holiday services. Well, holiday, holiday, if you know the etymology of that word, it was actually, the word was Holy day, holy day, that is a, a holy day, a consecrated day, a day uh, set aside for a religious observance. 
Yes, a holiday is rooted in a word that meant holy day. And uh, the word holiday actually, by definition, means the celebration of uh, a few days off from work. Well, born again believers, uh, we're not celebrating the fact that we don't have to go to work. We're celebrating this time of year, the birth of Christ. And I wonder why, why would any church, why, why are churches trying to be politically correct? I mean, hey, a pastor, bishop, superintendent, church leader, who are you afraid of offending? Is, uh, are, are the members of your church offended if you say Merry Christmas? Or we're having a Christmas party. Does that uh, offend the members of your church? If it does, then the question is, man, what have you been preaching uh, down through the years? We should be embracing the word that means gathering in the name of Christ. Christmas. That, that's what we should be doing. And, uh, and I'm telling you, everybody who's moving by the Spirit of God is doing just that. Got a question for you. Are you aware that there are... There are 11 federal holidays in the United States of America that the government recognizes. A federal holiday is a holiday that's set aside where people, uh, non-essential government workers, get paid and get that day or that time off. So it's, a, it is, it's federal. It's recognized. Well, the only federal holiday in the month of December is Christmas. Now, all of these other days that they're talking about, uh, the government doesn't rec recognize them. So why is uh, uh, in December are we talking about the Christmas, the, the holiday season when the only federal holiday is Christmas? So why, why, is it still, why is it still not the Christmas season? Well, to me it is. And to many others who are thinking and spirit feel, we understand the significance of keeping Christ in everything. I mean, how, how are you going to have uh, a season that is supposed to recognize Christ's birth, <laughs> but we leave Christ out? There's something wrong with that, I think. And I'm sure uh, you should feel the same way. We're trying to redefine Christmas. You know, we say Christmas. Christmas is about, it's about family. It's about uh, uh, food. It's about, you know, like we've done Thanksgiving, you know. We've made Thanksgiving about the turkey and the meal and how much you can eat. I tell you, saints, we, I tell you, we, we need to pray. We, the, 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 we need to recognize that these awesome times were set aside to acknowledge the goodness of the Lord. And in, in this time of the year, it's about the Savior coming down uh, to earth to die for our sins. So I got to talk to you about it tonight. And you've got to tune in. And I want you to, uh, the, those who are in the area, I want you, we look forward to seeing you tonight and those, our friends out there, our friends and members, and God has certainly blessed us, I tell you, to meet some of the most wonderful people in the world. Did you hear me? In the world. And people have joined the church from all over the, the country, and we thank God for every one of you. You are certainly an, a source of encouragement for me and for my family, and uh, we're going to, we're going to walk in the scriptures tonight and the word of God is going to bless you and you are going to, you are going to even the more tell people Merry Christmas and be excited about it because when you understand what Jesus did and what God did and the great kenosis that Jesus Christ uh, took and uh, that he made word kenosis is a Greek word, which means to step down or to stand down, to leave his home in glory and to wrap himself up in the likeness of a man and to come and live the human existence without sin and then to die for us. I tell you, it makes me love Jesus that much more. So tonight I want you to join me. The word of God is going to bless you real good. Yes, there's a whole lot of things going on in, in this world. We're praying for those families that have been affected by those tornadoes. Uh, we're praying and doing all that we can to um, uh, 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 assist 
Uh, and I, I want I want to encourage you to to pray for those people and uh, and the, and those who have lost loved ones and there there are, there are whole towns and cities that have been erased and and this should serve as a warning to all of us that first of all it should tell all of us whose houses are yet standing that God is good to us we we most certainly aren't in our intact houses worshiping in our churches riding in our communities because we're so holy, we're so perfect, we're so right that 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 couldn't have happened to us. No, my friends, that could have been you. That could have been me. But God has a plan. God has a plan and God knows. And so we have to trust the Lord. And I thank the Lord for his goodness, his kindness and his tender mercy. And one of the ways we want to express that thanks to the Lord is to do what we can to help others. I want to thank you also before I go off for what you did doing the gala. You remember I told you our gala is, uh, is also a fundraiser. You gave us, you blessed us to have in excess of 40 thousand dollars to send out to help people uh, who were who are less fortunate and we did it and I want you to know that of the uh, money that was raised 100 percent of it went to the cause there was no overhead calls, no administrative calls. We got to take this out and pull that out. No, it came in and it went out and people were are blessed. Uh, someone called me the other day and they blessed me so well. They said, thank you so much, Pastor. I will have a Merry Christmas as a result of, uh, of, of, of the kindness of the church. Well, that's the kind of people that the upper room people are and the kind of people that you are. And I thank you for uh, uh, your generosity. We will be speaking to you as the time go on about helping us to send relief to those people who have been affected out in the heartland of America, uh, uh, the Kentucky area, Tennessee area, the areas where the, they've been uh, affected by these storms. We want to do Arkansas. We want to do what we can to help people. In, in, in the name of the Lord. And, and you know what? Contrary to what you see some politicians say on television, prayer works. I've seen, I've seen politicians who say, keep your prayer. Well, listen, we need to pray. Nothing, move, nothing happens until and unless we pray. I was taught this little parable at church. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. Father, bless us, O oh God. Bless us, O oh God. We put our hands in yours and we ask you, O oh God, to keep us. We ask you, O oh God, to cause your face to shine upon us. And all who have been affected by these uh, tornadoes, Lord, all whose lives have been affected, they've lost loved ones. There's many have lost everything. Father, we pray for them. We pray that you would keep them and watch over them. And then God give us to do our part to bless these people, to help people to get back on their feet. Some are starting from scratch. They're starting all over. And God, we ask that you would bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Listen, Merry Christmas to you again. And I'm going to be Merry Christmasing you and, and saying Merry Christmas to you until Christmas has passed. And we'll start gearing up again for it next year. So join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> you guessed it. We are going to study the word of the Lord together. God bless.